Praise God. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I'll tell you, it's every one day closer to when it's all over. Won't that be exciting? It's going to happen. Amen. And we're so glad for those that are here. We're excited for guests, visitors. Good to see Chelsea's uh, dad, Brother Daniel. And, and I hope he doesn't get in trouble missing his church. And is a broken bow? And, uh, and then her brother, Colton. And, of course, Toy's been, been around for a while. We're, we're so glad for what the Lord's doing. You know, God can do anything. Somebody say amen. amen. And so I, I'm going to apologize before I even start for my whistling. <laughs> I can't help it. I don't want to. And, but James said, the tongue is the most unruly member. You can't tame it. So it's doing what it wants to do, and I can't stop it. <laughs> So if I whistle, well, whistle while you work. So whistle while you preach. I hope it doesn't bother you. I know it bothers me, but I guess I'll get used to it. Amen. And we're going to kind of talk this morning. Uh, I, I don't think it'll get <clears throat> really excited. I do have some scriptures. My text is three verses, but there's some scriptures. And um, I love the word of the Lord. You know, uh, Everybody's got their thing. My thing is, is, is just like hunt, like hunters go out and hunt. I never hunted in my life. Uh, of course, born in Indianapolis, there wasn't a whole lot of effort or time to do that. But I could get on something in the Word of the Lord and just go all through the Bible, searching and taking me and lead me. And it's, to me, that is the most thrilling thing in the Word of the Lord. That's to me. But I'm a preacher, and. Uh, but I want to I want to show us some things in the word of the Lord and the word of the Lord. If you will open your heart and your mind, it will help you. Amen. You came to church and we liken it like you go to the doctor to get what you need to do. We'll let the word of the Lord tell you what you need to do this morning. Amen. And in the book of Isaiah <coughs> 55, three verses, the first three it goes like this. It says. Oh, everyone, that'd be good if we could stand for the word of the Lord this morning. It's only three verses. If, you, if you're able to stand in, in respect for the word of the Lord, not for me, but for his word. Isaiah 55, the first three verses. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor, <clears throat> and you labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me. Everybody say diligently. <laughs> unto me, and eat ye that which is good, <clears throat> and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. God bless you. Please be seated this morning. Isaiah is talking here. And I just want to elaborate for a little while. We won't keep you long. Uh, I won't, but the word of the Lord might. And, uh, but dissect this. This is some good information that will help us. And we need all the help we can get. We're living in a crazy world. We're living in a world that is attacking the church. It's trying to draw the church out. If he can keep you from getting into church, it's not so much you he hates as much as the devil hates God. That's really what it comes down to. We're in this battle between good and evil. We're in the battle between the truth and deception. We're caught right in the middle and he wants to keep everybody from going to church. But there's a desire that God put in us to find this truth and to get on this path. And when your hunger for God and your fear of God, again, the fear of God is not a fear of talking to him. But it's a fear of, hey, he has all the power. He can do what he wants to do. And I respect and I understand that. A kid does not fear their dad for, for not being able to talk to them or walking up and playing with them or throwing a football with them. But they do fear their dad for what he is capable of doing. <laughs> he controls the situations. So we understand that's the fear of God. So 
Verse 1, he says, Everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come buy. Well, I don't have any money. You're telling me I have no money and come and buy? It says, you have no money, <clears throat> come buy and eat. And not just buy it, but eat it. Come and buy my wine and the milk without any money and without price. That even makes no sense, does it? Well, it does if we understand. Well, understand this, ladies and gentlemen. We have come from all different homes today. Okay? You came from a tangible building in a tangible car, working in tangible jobs for tangible money. Tangible means things you can see and put your hand on. Things we understand because we see it. But we all came from those homes today, and we are in a house that is tangible. We can see it, the house of God. But the spirit of this house is intangible. It's invisible. It's the spirit of God, and that's what really matters. When he moves on you and you feel something moving on you, when you're singing what you feel, you can't see it. It's something you feel. That's God. So when we're in God's house and the preacher's preaching or teaching or whatever, it's a spiritual application to you. You receive it by faith and you, and you welcome it and you hold on to it and you cling to it and it will help you. Somebody say amen. So, but he said, the water, the wine, and the milk, these are not referring to tangibly. Because if it did, he would not say, buy this milk without any money. You can't do that. It's a spiritual thing he's talking about for spiritual blessings. Who does not want spiritual blessings from God? Nobody but me and Pat? Well, we'll take them all, Pat. And Sister Price, she decides, we all do. We want the spiritual blessings. Who doesn't? Amen. So look, what, look at the, the water. Look at John chapter, in the book of uh, St. John chapter 4, uh, 7 through 15. I want to read this and, just, and, 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 and show you something this. There come a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away at, unto the city. Now, hold on, Sister Hubbard, before you change. Here's something in this I want us all to catch. His disciples were gone away to the city to buy meat. His disciples went away to get some meat. Now there's another illustration in the Bible, church, where they didn't have enough food and they were going to go get some food and he said, no, what do we got? And he took that situation and performed a mighty miracle and fed 5,000 men plus women and children. Why did he not do it here? Why did the disciples just not say, Lord, we got this little, this, why didn't he do it again? Understand this, church. God, you'll never figure him out. He does what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me put it this way. Did, do you believe that Jesus actually raised dead people? Why did he not raise every dead person? Think about it. It wasn't the will of God. You understand it's the will of God that has to take place. It's what he wants. And I kind of got a feeling when Jesus raised Lazarus and Lazarus come forth and and don't you kind of think with all the people that flocked Jesus and surrounded him, there was somebody in that crowd that said, Lord, you know, my husband, he just died a couple days ago and I have no way of providing. Will you come and raise him? If it's not the will of God, we read that in Ephesians, Sister Price. He says God's got a plan and God's going to do what God wants to do. You're not going to stop him. I don't care. You're not going to stop God. Somebody say amen. amen and be glad that you're on his side. This thing is real. There is a heaven and there is a lake of fire. The devil is so deceived. He actually believes. I don't know what he thinks. He's so deceived and I don't really care what he thinks. My concern is with God. So the point here is understand God's got a will and it's our 
it's in our best interest to pray like Jesus. Lord, not what I want, but what you want. That is huge. If you think I need to marry this person and God is against it and all he sees is destruction and heartache down the road, why would you want that? He knows the end of this, my friend. He knows the end of your life. He knows where you're going to be tomorrow. He knows where you're going to be in an hour from now. Why would you not want to tap into that security knowing if you're on his will, it's going to be all right? I'm telling you, that's why we pray, Lord, I pray your will for my life in everything I do. So I wanted to pause and help us understand it's all about God. We've studied that in Ephesians. He's got a purpose, and it said, we read it, he's going to do what he has planned to do. He's already planned this out in his wisdom. So the next one. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that, that thou, being a Jew, you ask me, you ask to drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews, they have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that says to you, Give me to drink, thou wouldst ask of him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. For whence then hast thou that living water? <clears throat> Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank? Thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, you're never going to thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Isn't that amazing? I don't understand that. He's talking spiritually, church. We drink water. You, gotta, you can't go very long without water. And we need that for our bodies that are tangible. But if all we dwell on is our bodies and this world and satisfying this flesh, we're neglecting the most important, our spiritual man. Put it this way. How many times have you <clears throat> just really felt, you know, I just don't feel like going to church or whatever. And when you Made, you made yourself. Sometimes you have to make yourself come to church. That's just life. And when you did come to church, you left and you felt a whole lot better. Wave your hand if that's ever happened. You know what you did? You drank the spiritual water. Your spirit man didn't want to do anything. That's how it works. Just like, man, I'm so thirsty. Naturally, I can't really stand it. And you drink and you just feel revived. Naturally, that's what the Lord Jesus is saying. I can give you a water for the spirit man. The Lord, hear me, somebody. He's so more concerned about your future with him in heaven than what you can gain down here for a few years. You've got to believe that. Will he make you? Absolutely not. It's all by choice. I choose to do this. And that's why I'm so glad those that I, that I have the privilege to pastor you, you beautiful people, and you have that understanding. You've got your mind made up. Nobody's going to take you out of this church except Jesus when he comes back to get you. <laughs> no family member, no spouse, no coworker, no ex-spouse <laughs> is going to influence you to leave the presence of God. And that's encouraging. Don't feel like you're being picked on. That ought to make you think, wow, Lord, I'm excited. So he's what he's saying. The, the water is a, he said, I will give you this water. How do you get this water? You can, you, you know, we have to buy water now. You can't even drink some waters in the cities like the ones we live in. You have to buy water and drink it. Aren't you glad the water, you could walk in here and feel something. Did you buy it? No, you believed it. Hallelujah. So he said, and now look at, he said the water, <clears throat> look at John chapter five, verse six. This is, this is talking about you hunger, milk and water and wine. Did I, did I give you that one, Sister Holster? Matthew five, verse six. 
Didn't give it to you? Blessed. These are some of the blessed out of the book of Matthew. Are they which do hunger and thirst after a better job? Blessed are those that thirst after winning the lottery. <laughs> blessed are those that thirst after whatever. No. Blessed, happy, favored, happy and favored are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Right standing with God. Giving God what he deserves. Somebody say amen. amen. And book of Acts chapter 2, 12 and 13. The water, the wine, the milk. Blessed are, and they were all amazed. This is taught when the Holy Ghost was being poured out. And they were in doubt saying one another, what means all this tongue talking stuff going on? And look at the next verse. Did I not give you that one? Okay. This is in the book of Acts when the Holy Ghost is being poured out. And they were all amazed and they were in doubt. Same one another. Others mocking, they said, these men are full of new wine. Now, I, some of you in here, I'm sure some of you have probably been drunk. Not this weekend, I hope. But... <laughs> But, but B.C., before Christ, and, uh, and you probably did strange things because the, the alcohol affected your natural body. It did things. I don't understand how all that works. It just does. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost can do things for the inner man that will make you do things that other people will think, how can they do that? That's why I said earlier, some people, we were all impossible till God got a hold of us. Some of your family members gave up, wouldn't even, didn't even believe you'd ever get in church. Didn't even think you'd ever live for God. And then you, you start living for God and you start doing what's right and people say, they got something that's real. Just like some people need the, the alcohol and the wine and whatever or the drugs or whatever it is that people are addicted to anymore for this flesh just to live through life. They can't make it without it. Some people that really have the understanding understand that with their spirit man. I've got to touch God constantly. I can't go very... It's, and what's exciting is the world... That's what's neat, ladies and gentlemen. The world lives and works Monday through Friday looking for the weekend to have a part A. I like it when they become apostolic and then they work through the week waiting for church on Sunday so they can have a Holy Ghost party. Somebody say amen. And they start getting that attitude like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord because they understand this is what really matters. And not only to escape hell, but it is the relationship, the love that God has put in your heart. You know, the creator of all this around here, you just know he loves you. I don't care if anybody else loves me. I don't care if anybody else understands me. I'm not living for them. I'm living for God. You can't do for me what he did and is doing and will continue to keep doing. I appreciate all you do, but nobody, nobody can do for me what God can. Amen. Amen. The upper room experience. What's happening? And we need the, we need the waters. We need the, 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 the food. We need the wine. We need to... There's nothing wrong with getting, with enjoying life. That's why, what do you think Noah did? What was the first thing Noah did when they, when they, when the boat settled and they all come out? Got drunk. They built a vineyard. That was priority. We got to get some wine going, man. 
Understand, church, there's not, that's what they did. You know, life is tough. You know, you need some kind of a release. Unfortunately, this world has chosen things that their release is temporary to the flesh. Aren't you glad in the New Testament we can have something that not as temporary, but that is eternal? And this wine is not something you have to wait to let it grow and the vineyard grow and you're anticipating. You can come to God and in an instant he can give you that thrill that you're really after and you don't have to wake up with a headache. You don't have to wake up hugging a toilet somewhere, puking your guts out. Man, this is fun. It'll give you a peace. That's what he's saying. You don't have any money? Come and buy this wine. You know how you buy it? Self-surrender. Don't get in your checkbook. He doesn't take credit cards. He doesn't want your money. He just wants your want to because of who he is and a surrender that says, God, I can't, I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm giving you my will and doing it your way. And the thing about this, Proverbs talks about that. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy this thing with, a, with just a belief. And then we need the milk. This is interesting. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 in the King James says this. As newborn babes <clears throat> desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Somebody hear this. People that come to the Lord, we call them converts. We call them new converts, actually. Everybody, how long is a new convert? I personally believe it's at least three or four or five years. And understand this. When you first come to the Lord, and you, there's so many things you don't understand. Believe me. When you've been serving God for six decades, you still don't understand so many things. That's just the way it is. Somebody hear this. Understand you need the milk of the Word of God. And that's talking about the milk is your desire. That's what that means. Just go with your desire. God, I want to be right. I want to be happy. I want to please you. That's the desire. And the sincere milk is the pure milk. What's the pure milk? I looked it up. That milk is talking about on the Strong's definition says things, the less difficult truths. Understand this. Somebody hear me. When the new converts and people that have been this just for a few years or you're trying to make a, you're trying to get on the path of doing right, just keep that desire. Don't worry about all these great truths and revelations that are out there. You just work on the simple basics of loving God in your own way. And you work out your salvation your own way. Don't worry about things that It'll be there when God decides to take you into those areas. But for, for a while, just love the sincere, pure word of God. Less important, less, you know, don't worry about these things. That, leave that for people that have been in this, will help make those decisions. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't even be concerned about it. Just come to church and love God. Come to church and love God. Come to church and love God and let him work on you. Don't worry about, and, and don't worry about, is there, just don't worry about it. Come to church and love God. You know, uh, we're fixing to ha have another grandson and donuts almost here. And, and, and I got a funny feeling when that child is born and as your kids were born and, and they don't even have a clue what's going on. But guess what? He's going to be taken care of. Don't worry about it. The church is going to help you. They're going to, they're going to love you and they're going to welcome you and they're going to understand. It just, that's just the way it works.
Somebody say amen. And a kid's going to grow up and your kids are going to make mistakes. And, 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 and even when they're older, you make mistakes. But a kid will constantly make mistakes. You don't kick them out. You love them and you just love them and understand. You love them and understand. Somebody hear that. We love them and understand. We're not going to kick them out. We're going to love them and understand. And God will work with them. Is that okay with everybody? The sincere Pure, pure uh, things that aren't necessary right now. Uh, uh, you know, a four or five year old child does not worry if there's going to be food to eat. He just knows it's going to happen. He ain't worried about that. He's worried about Legos. He's worried about climbing a tree. He's worried about playing, having tea. If they're a girl, I hope. Uh, Colton, is your daughter here? Okay. Toy, that's your daughter, right? Yeah. I, I don't have my glass. I get it mixed up. What's your name? I forget. Finley. Fin, that's right. Finley, are you worried about when you get older, you're going to have to get a job <laughs> and provide for your own food? Doesn't even cross. She ain't even listening. <laughs> and there's a point there. New ones, don't worry about that. That conversation doesn't even relate to her, just like some of the things shouldn't relate to you. Just love God. As that child is loving her mama, you need to love God and love the church. And mama's going to take care of her, and the church's going to take care of you. Hallelujah to God. But we get so so wrapped up, just just love him and do it. You can buy all this. Brother Barma, you buy it, not with tangible money, because we're in the house of God. Everything in God is spiritual. Why? Because God is a? God is what? That's why we do everything in church on a spiritual application. I know we have to do tangible things, but right now we're focused on the spiritual. Anybody right here worried about paying any bills? I hope not. You shouldn't be worried about your own bills. Let just put that out of your mind for a while and let the spirit of God just marinate in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind. And you will be amazed what it will do when you will receive it. Praise God. So let me go on. Proverbs 3. Look what this says. This is, this, is, this is pretty cool. Happy is the man. Anybody want to be happy? Happy is the man or woman or young person or child that finds wisdom. And the man that gets understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. Wisdom, understanding, You will be happy. Those are things that you can't see. That's the intangible spiritual part. But if you'll seek for the spiritual applications, church, I'm talking to all of us, not the things that we think these things that we buy, it's all temporary. That uh, uh, Tony bought a new vehicle recently and Man, it was sharp. And I remember when he, had, when he bought a new one, when they lived across the street, he got, I think it was his, I forget what it was. And I remember that, like the first week he was out there washing it and cleaning it. That lasted about a month. So we, he took me to, to, to Arkansas one day this week and he wanted to drive his truck. And man, when he bought it, it was sharp. Guess what? It wasn't near as clean as it was when he bought it. Anybody eat breakfast this morning? I got nobody? Y'all bunch of, I'm glad we're in the house of God, you can repent. <laughs> I got a funny feeling. Did you feel full and good when you ate? Pretty satisfied? Well, well I'm done. I don't have to eat no more. Good luck. You almost boy, that was so good. And we've even made the statement when we eat too much. At, 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 usually on Sunday afternoon for some reason, I don't know. And, and we've made the statement, I'm not going to eat for three days. Three hours later, we're back in the kitchen. <laughs> everything, understand church, everything tangible does not last. These pot smokers, they get their high, it doesn't last. Pain medicine I was on The first few days, it doesn't last. (laughs) 
It doesn't last. That's why people, but it feels so good. And that's why they want to keep doing it. Eat and feel, and there's nothing wrong. The Lord made it that. He said, enjoy the fruit of your labor. Enjoy eating and drinking. That's what it said in Ecclesiastes. That's the real thrill of life. Who doesn't like to eat? It feels pretty good, doesn't it? God gave us that. That's a blessing from God. And more than the, and let me put it, let me connect it this way. If it feels real good in the natural, would you admit to that? No, wouldn't? Well, it does. How much more on something that doesn't last, how much more you think it's going to feel good on the spirit man that will last? And you just keep building on it. And build on. That's what the writer's trying to get at. The things we, we get so, and in America, we are so blessed, but by the same token, it can also be a detriment to so many people because it's almost like they don't need God. And that can be a detriment, but I'm glad I'm, I, I can preach to people here today that have that understanding. I may be blessed beyond riches, but it doesn't affect my relationship with God. God, I look at God the same way as if I don't have two nickels to rub together or if I've got $50 million somebody decides to give me that will not affect my dependence on God. Somebody say amen. amen. And if you can have that attitude, now you can tell God you won't, but he knows your heart. <laughs> he knows if you're patronizing him or not. I've heard people say that. I've heard them say to me, say, boy, preacher, you know, this, that, and other. And, and, and if I got this in situations, I would give to the church. And they usually don't get it. It's like they want to tell God that. He knows if you're going to do it or not. And the past record, did, did you do it when you didn't have it? <laughs> did you give when you didn't have nothing? You're going to wait till you get the money to give. Somebody say, amen. These things don't last. Having a garage sale, Sister Clark, Sister Clarks, <laughs> Chelsea and Monica and the ladies having a garage sale here in a few weeks. Guess what? They're selling things that people, when they first had it, <laughs> thought this is really it. Look what I've got. I'm going to strut around town in my new suit. Now they won't be seen with it because they're going to give it away. Things in the natural, things that are tangible, do not last. And you don't even have to have money. That's how, that's how fair God is. You don't have to have, he, that's when he doesn't run your credit. He doesn't look at your checkbook. He doesn't look in your billfold. He looks at a hunger in your heart. And all you need to buy this Wine, this milk, and this water is a willingness to want it. Hallelujah to God. Isn't that good to know? Everything that, even the Bible says, everything that we see with our eyes are going to be burned up and disappear. It's temporal. Only things that are invisible are eternal. Amen. No silver or gold. No silver or gold can buy the blessings of God. Anybody want the blessings of God? His blessings are his protection. Do you want his protection? His blessings are his healing. Do you want his healing? His blessings is prospering you. Do you want to be prospered? Oh, look at the people that are prospering. Look at these, look at these drug dealers, Brother Clark, and these, these people that are exploiting kids and all the stuff that goes on that we don't even want to talk about. Well, unfortunately... The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The same guy that's growing corn is growing the stuff that they make cocaine out of, unfortunately. That's just what it is. Just be glad that the Lord gave you an understanding to do it the right way. I'll say that again. Just be thankful the Lord gave you an understanding to do things the right way. That's huge. That's huge because nobody's getting by. Even this earth is going to be burned up. It's so temporal. Praise God. What is required, this price is talking about, is self-surrender and just accept it. I want it, God. And it'll put you on a path. His spiritual gifts, these blessings, cannot be purchased. 
You could come in and say, boy, I, I see how some of the people in church are, are blessed and God is just seems like his hands on them and, and they got the Midas touch. Everything they touch turns to gold. No, they don't have the Midas touch. They've got a touch from the master's hand and something happened in their life and God has shown them favor. They didn't do it for the favor. It just came with their obedience. It's part of the package. He honors your obedience and your sincerity and your surrender. He honors that and he will bless them. You could walk into this church and want this blessing and still do your own thing. Well, I'm going I'm to buy my way. I'm going to get Brother Clark. I've got $50,000 cashier's check right here. I want to give it to the church. And man, I want to have what you can. We'll take it. <laughs> man, I'll come and get it. Just call me. But that will not do anything. For the blessings of God. Do you understand that? Amen. Nothing. You cannot buy. They tried to do it in the New Testament. They tried to buy, they tried to buy the Holy Ghost. And all these power these, the apostles had. said, you can't buy this with money. They saw him casting out demons. I want to be able to do that. You can't buy it. You just want it. Because you want it more than the things that aren't working in your life. The tangible things... Things that I do, and we all have done that. We've all done things that we are not proud of. And we're going to talk about that uh, Wednesday night, about some of the things we, that had us held and had it in our had it grip on us called sin until we got the Lord to deliver us. But God's, understand this, we'll go to verse 2, God's spiritual gifts, His blessings, church, they cannot be purchased. They are freely given. But only those that receive them. He only deals with those. He only fed those that were in that congregation. That bread did not go to 400 miles away and feed them. It only fed those that were in that congregation. This word that you are hearing right now. Can everybody hear me? I could be telling you right now, the Lord could come down right now and he's affecting those in his, the sound of this voice right now. Understand this. It's to us in this room. The Lord could, the Lord could speak to us right now and say, I'm, and he's done things like this. You've been in church services where he said, we had one recently. And I told my wife the other day, you remember a couple months ago and I, I, I've, I've canceled all three of my doctor's appointments. That's just me. Because I still believe in the Lord and trust him. And, and I was hurting so bad. You remember? And I was going to, and, and, and the Lord said, let the church pray for you, son. You remember me telling you that? And you all come up and prayed for me? As God's my witness, I have not had one inkling to this day of that. And I was hurting. I was hurting bad. I really thought it was it. But my point, that and then the Lord, he, he's been in here and he's healed people in this church. He said, if, if the, I feel healing in this house. If you will come up, the Lord can heal you and believe it. And has that ever happened to anybody? Raise your hand. That you responded to those, those and God has done it. Amen. Has he done it? Okay. That only affected those under the sound of this voice. I got news for you. The people across the street didn't. I just got healed. Well, they didn't. Because they didn't hear the word of God and the voice of God speaking to them and they had to re respond to that voice. Isn't God amazing how he works? I'm preaching what the Lord wants to be preached here in Okmulgee. I have no idea what Brother Monks is preaching in Morse. He might even be preaching this morning. I have no idea what Darren Smith is preaching in Mounds. I have, is your dad preaching this morning in Guthrie? I have no idea what Brother Maxwell's preaching. But guess what? That does not affect Gary Maxwell and the church at Guthrie right now. Only what you are listening at this time. Everybody understand that? That is the wisdom of the way God designed things. And it's so cool to have that understanding. Look at verse 2. They are freely given. When you hear the word of God preached or spoken to you in faith, you need to respond in faith because it doesn't hang around forever. Just like the gifts of the Spirit. When there's, when there's gifts moving in a church and there's, there's maybe the gift of tongues to go forth and it, 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 you can just feel it, it hits. But I'm telling you, if somebody didn't pick up on it in 15, 20, 30 seconds, it, it, it leaves. That works not just in tongues of interpretation. It works with, with uh, 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 wisdom, 
healing, prophecy. God is like he's really making the effort. And somebody's going to pick up or they're going to miss it. You've been in church. You've heard somebody give a message in tongues and they waited and nothing happened. And they, we didn't sit here and wait and keep waiting for 20 minutes. They leave. And God goes on to something else. That's just the nature of God. He, so when you hear this priest, and even this morning, you don't have to get up and make all kinds of a scene. and make. But all you got to do is just right where you're at, receive it. Isn't that beautiful? Receive it. Believe it. Say, I want that, God. I just want to be right with my creator. I'm tired of doing it. My way. I want to do it his way. And the Lord will help you. But it's, you, ain't, you can outweigh him. <laughs> Try. He went 40 years for the, his children for a nine day journey. You're not. He ain't going to get tired of waiting. We will be the ones that will give up before he will. But verse 2, real quickly. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? The real bread, the bread of, of the Lord. He said, this, this bread is my body. He is the bread of life. Why do we constantly spend money on things that does not last? There's nothing wrong with that. But it is if you can't keep it in the right perspective. Somebody say amen. And you labor for that which doesn't satisfy. Hearken. Everybody say hearken. Hearken. Diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. I just want to go through this real quick. In a nutshell, he's saying, why do we waste money on something that is not real food that would satisfy our inner man? This is what we're after. We do things to satisfy the longing in our soul. We do things. We go and do all these things. And uh, addicts do things because they're trying to satisfy something in Inside. That's why they keep doing it over and over and over and over and over. It doesn't last. And God's not doing it mean. He's just asking the question, why? Do you not understand what you're looking for is me? And I am very willing to do this for you if you would just come unto me. That's why he said, hearken. I like that. Isaiah 5 and 8, real quickly. Uh, what does that say, sister? Woe unto them that join house to house and that lay field to field till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. He's talking a few 50 chapters back. He say, why is it? The Lord's speaking to Isaiah. Why do people just keep building and building and houses and house? They're just like, this is my satisfaction. This is my, this is, I've received it. I, I, I'm receiving something by building and accumulating and all these things. And the Bible says you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. What do you got? People do things. It's an addiction. I hope nobody hears like this. You can be a workaholic and that can be an addiction. It's that self-satisfaction of working and accomplishing and doing. A addiction is a big word, and it's not just in, in uh, drugs and pornography and alcohol. and You name it, there's a lot of addictions. There's something that, that when you do it, you feel good within yourself. And there's nothing wrong with it. Don't, don't get me wrong. But the Lord's saying, why are you doing this to, and it won't last? Why don't you just think for a minute here? And seek me. I made you. I know you. I know how to help you. I know what you want more than you know what you want. And not only that, ladies and gentlemen, guess what, Justin? He'll give it to us. And there's nothing like, nothing like having your, I'm telling you, I've been there and a lot of us here have been there. There's nothing like, like doing something, say you want to go away on a, on a vacation and there's nothing like going away on a vacation knowing you're living right for God. I'm telling you, that's a good feeling. Versus, well, I owe this, I owe that, and I really can't anyway. And you can't even enjoy it. It's like if, 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 if Sister Hubbard, you had your arm broke, what, a couple months ago? Three months? Two months? Or shoulder? Three months? Roughly three months? 
The day after that, would you enjoy going to Branson? <laughs> but now six months from now, maybe next week, you feel better now, don't you? You feel like going to Branson? <laughs> Bad illustrator. Six months from now, <laughs> you would feel like going to, you would enjoy it, wouldn't you? Because the natural man doesn't feel good. I can't enjoy what God has given us the ability to enjoy. Now let's connect that to the spiritual man. You see where I'm going with this? How can you possibly enjoy anything if the spirit man doesn't feel good? Nothing wrong with Norma Hubbard. She didn't want to go anywhere. She wanted to go to bed. I was there the last couple of weeks. I didn't want to do nothing. I want to go to bed. You're hurt. You don't want to do nothing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> And that's the same way with the spirit man. When, every, when it's not right, when your spirit man is not right with its creator, you don't really want to do anything. But you have to eat your way through life. I have to go through life. So what am I going to do? Instead of getting my inner man right with God, I'm going to go to all these external avenues and try to find that happiness. Oh, you'll find it, but it won't last very long. It won't last very long. Somebody say, the Lord's talking to somebody here today. It's because, you know why? Because he loves us so much. And in the Bible says his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We need so much more understanding of the word of God. There's no concern. Isaiah 5 and 8. What does it say? Did we read? Oh, they had no concern. All they want to do is build, 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 and accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. And he said they, they had no concern for their spiritual blessings. And it's a very old saying, but only Jesus can satisfy your soul, my friend. Only him. Amen. And we read that. Mark 8, 36 says you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. Let me read something real quick, and then we'll go to the verse 3, and, and then we'll, we'll, we're going to uh, close here. In Romans 6, chapter 20 through 23, in Romans 6, verses 20 through 23, in the easy to read, says this. It says, in the past, you were slaves to sin. And you did not even think about doing right. You did evil things, and now you're ashamed of what you did. And we've all been there. We're just glad that God chooses not to remember them, and other people don't know them. And it needs to be that way. <laughs> I'm going to tell you again, don't share your deep, dark things of the past with anybody. Don't share <laughs> It says confess your faults, not your deep, dark sins, because you don't know who you're talking to. They may like to, before you know it, everybody knows it. Just trust me, that's a good way to live. Confess it to God, not to me, to God, and he'll choose not to remember it anymore. Isn't that beautiful? You talk about a friend, and he won't tell anybody. Praise God. You did evil things, and now you're ashamed of what you did. <laughs> He's asking a simple question. Did those things help you? No. They were only going to bring death. If you didn't change the lifestyle that people, these talking to the Romans, when they were converted, he was asking them, remember when you weren't living for God and you did these things, did they really help you? No. It was only going to bring you death. But now... Thank God we're talking to people in this service. Now you are free from that sin. You have become, I like this word, a slave of God. And it's not a bad word. It's a good word. And I don't mind doing it. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's considered a worker, a committed person to God. In the Old Testament, they, when the slaves were to be set free, they, they drove a nail through their ear and they asked them, do you want to be set free or do you want to stay as a slave to this person? And most of them chose to continue being a slave. We call it a slave and it's not talking about, and I know you can take that word and it's been done wrong. I'm not talking about against people's will. He's talking about a slave of somebody committed. Why? Because they're going to take care of me. So I, I was a slave to this person and, 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 and I have a chance to become free every seven years and I choose not to go free because then I got to 
fend for myself and I don't know what I'm doing, but if I stay in this household and just do what I need to be doing, this person that I'm a slave to will take care of me. Isn't that beautiful? But we get that word slave that Paul's talking about mixed in with the slaves of, the, uh, of, uh, of centuries ago. That's not the same word. That was against their will. And God will not do anything against your will. Everybody that loves God and, and in the apostolic, a true apostolic, they are a slave because they want to be. Somebody say amen. amen. And they call us a cult. It ain't a cult. It's somebody that had their eyes open to say, man, I ain't real smart, but I know this is a good plan. This is what it's all about. And, and he says, but now you're free from sin. You become a slave of God. And the result is that you live only for God. You still enjoy family, but your real priority, your closet prayers, your meditations, when you're driving to work, when you're by yourself, when you're reading the Bible and nobody around, I'm telling you, you can have a relationship with God. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world. You talk about the, it's almost like everybody wants like a child that, that, you know, when they get scared and they get concerned, they want to climb up in mom's lap. Has your kids ever done that? For security, they want that. I'm talking about Brother Brian, I'm, I'm 67 years old and I still need the security of my Heavenly Father. I love it. I love it. Nothing like it. In that when you have that security, when a child, when Finley, get scared or something. I could, I could yell real loud and she'd be scared. What's she going to do? She's not going to run over to, to Sean and jump up in his lap. She's going to jump up in mama's lap because she knows mama and mama's going to take care of her. And what Paul is telling the Romans, hear this church, when your relationship with God is right and you're doing the things that are right, when things come against us and world just hits and the life just hits us upside the face from time to time, we're not going to run anywhere else. It draws us closer to God. And when you have that relationship, it makes you not even want to go anywhere else. I made this statement of somebody, somebody looked at me and said, you're weird. I said, well, thank you. I don't mean this disrespectful. Honestly, I can, I can, drink as many Bud Lights as I want to today. And I drank as many as I wanted yesterday. You know how many I drank? None. I didn't want to. <laughs> Is that real hard to understand, Daniel? <laughs> you can go get some Coke and stick it up your nose as much as you want. How much did you stick up your nose yesterday? Not none. And I'm not downing those that are doing that. It's like Paul said, it didn't help those then and it doesn't help those that have partaken of that prior to Christ. You can, but you don't want to. Because you understand, I've connected now with the one that made me, the one that loves me. Praise God. It's kind of like Tony and I were talking and he's so wise and smart for his age. And it's kind of like we go back to our default program of depending on God. Just like your inner child depending on mom and dad and the security, you need to keep that, I don't care how old you get with your heavenly father. Nothing in this world is worth losing my soul. Somebody say amen, so we're hurrying. And then he says, hearken diligently. This is really good. Heart, and it was interesting. That's why I was studying this. Hearken diligently. Not just, hey, listen. Hearken is a real strong word. It's not like, well, you need to listen. It's no. You need to pay attention to this. I'm saying it once and you best get it. It's a real strong encouragement. The word means Harkin Dillinson is a strong encouragement for someone who's lacking enthusiasm. Well, I can't get enthused about living for God. You need to be enthused about living for God like people live for the world. Like they can't wait till the weekend to go party. We need to have that same enthusiasm for God. Can't wait to pray. Can't wait to come to church. Can't wait to do something spiritual. Can't wait to give. 
I'm telling you, at, at, and it happened. Anybody here? I know I'm preaching to a lot of people that have that relationship. They hearken. And then let the soul delight itself. And you don't do this because you're trying to patronize God and it's going to be a temporary fix. You do it because something clicked in your brain and you realize I need to get a hold of this. And I like this. Let, that way your soul will delight itself. <laughs> we all are trying to feed our soul with the things we do externally. And God's trying to get people's attention. Realize you don't do it externally. Do it internally. Amen. Delight. I love it. To be pampered. Who wouldn't want to be pampered? And it also means happy. Sister Hubbard, apostolics are some of the happiest people in the world because we can get drunk on the Holy Ghost and not get a hangover. Now, some of us get overhangs, but we don't, we don't get hangovers. Isn't that a good feeling? You can leave church, and I pe people are going to leave this morning just more encouraged, more greater desire to live for God and have a great day. The weather's going to be gorgeous. Go out and have a good lunch. Enjoy the family. Well, how much better does it get? Knowing your hope of heaven is not far around the corner. Folks, how much better can it get? Not much. And to be happy. And I'm closing here in verse 3. We know only the soul satisfies. David talked about that. But verse 3, this is important. Incline your ear. Everybody dial in. Maybe five or ten at the most. And then we're going to... Everybody say incline. Your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. He's not going to make you. You've got to do something on your part. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So that word incline... <laughs> You know what that word means? Incline. It literally means bend your ear. So this morning, I come to the church early, do the things, and I go back home to get ready. I'm sitting there, and our dog's sitting there just looking at me. This is Molly. I don't know what kind of dog. She's a dog. And I just talk, I start talking to her like I was talking to a person. She just, she just laid there and looked at me. Didn't make a move. Eyes just wide open. And I'm saying all kind of random stuff. And I'm saying, you know, do you want to see Riker and Pax? And, 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 and you want to do this? And your sister's Pepper. And, and, and then I said, and she didn't make a move, Hope. This is the gospel truth. So I'm sitting there and I said, do you want to go for a walk in the park? Them ears started going like this. I says, God's my witness. They start, she didn't move, but her ears bent to me. And I thought, that is a good understanding for my sermon, Lord. She didn't move, but her ear said, ooh, I understand that word. And so here I'm getting ready to close with this, with this encouragement. Let your inner ear, the ear of your soul, bend to what he's been saying today. Saying, I like that. That sounds like some pretty good advice. You can sit, uh, crack me up. And that, the, her ear just said, and one day, it did, she didn't move, but that ear got to get close. I got to hear that. That got my attention. Bend your ears, what the, the, the prophet's saying through the unction of the Holy Ghost. Bend your ear, your soul, what you hear. Bend it, incline it to your ear. Your ear in this particular word means to receive a divine revelation. The Lord has given some people here today and a lot of us encouragement with divine revelation of answers for our problems. He revealed some answers in his word. Our soul, we understand what our soul is. And you will not really live. And I could read many more to read, but I know we're running short on time, so I'll, I'll bypass some of these, and they're, they're all good. Everything in the Word of the Lord is good. But he says, so your soul can live. My question, does anybody want to just exist, or do you want to really live? And the enemy wants to try to get even God's people to just quit living and start existing and waiting for the rapture, or death, whichever comes first. He wants you to live while you're waiting. 
Our soul will live. It's our, it's our seat of our appetites, our emotions, our passions, uh, our activity, our will, our character, what really thrills you. He wants that to be excited. And it can be if you just do it right. And to live, that word means to prosper, to be revived. I'm telling you, when you live for God, things happen. You don't even know what happens in your life. He heals you when you didn't even ask for it. He blesses you when you didn't even ask him. He does things you don't even know. You do things for your kids. They don't have a clue how it happens. It just happens. He revives and quickens from sickness, from discouragement, from death, from faintness. To revive and refresh, cause to grow, to persevere, preserve life, and restore to life. I want that. Anybody else? Chelsea, if you, if you could, can we sing one song real quick as we close out this morning? And a lot of times we ask people to, to come to the front. But I think, I think we did this last Sunday. Uh, I, I'm asking us just where we're at. Let the word of the Lord speak to you. Is that fair enough? Be encouraged in God. Don't be discouraged. Let his word, even if we've been in this for 50, 60, 70 years, it doesn't matter. We still need the word of the Lord to be a strength to us and give us and feel better and more and a greater desire to walk out of here in a little bit. And inside you can say, honestly, you can say, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling.